All right. Well, there was my minute timer. So thanks everybody for joining us today for our uh, final virtual training here that we're offering in 2020 and our social media small bites for farmers market training. The event, the event one today is uh, about events and is Mallory goes to the farmers market. And we are lucky to have Mallory Hansen here. We are also going to have Becky talk about the Sioux City Market and myself. My name is Josh Danstill. I work for Northeast Iowa RCND. And we are thankful to have you here with our Farmers Market Promotion Program grant that we received from the USDA to provide some social media farmers market related training to all market vendors and market managers with us. And this training will be recorded. So if you needed some notes or to watch it later, it will be posted on the YouTube page. And if you have registered for this training, it will be sent out with the link, with a link from the email that you registered for. Other housekeeping things, if you have any questions, please put them in the chat box and then we will get to those after and have a few minutes for questions after both speakers. So to start us off, in a typical year, we would have had these trainings held around the state and we would have worked with local partners to given an opportunity for local vendors and market managers to collaborate and chat together. But of course we are in 2020, so that is not happening. Uh, so we still wanted to bring that little flavor to the trainings. So we are here with Becky from the Sioux City Farmers Market and if she would like to talk for a few minutes about her market. Yeah, hi guys, can you hear me okay? Um, yeah, so my name is Becky Kempers. Um, I am with the Sioux City Farmers Market, and if you don't know where that's at, it's located up in the um, northwest part of Iowa there. Um, and the Sioux City Farmers Market has been in operation for um, 13 years, and I have been the market manager for five years. So this is my fifth year going on the market. Um, and so, you know, my basic operations is being on site every Wednesday and Saturday. Um, we operate from May to October. Um, and then from there, um, I kind of do, you know, the, overseeing all the vendors, um, what's happening at the market. And then the off season, you know, I do all the paperwork and um, get stuff ready for next year. Um, and we hope next year's a little different, um, that we can get back to a semi-normal um, farmer's market, um, which would be great. But um, this year for the market, um, with all the COVID stuff going on, um, you know, everybody at the beginning was unsure if we were going to be able to open. Um, and luckily, we were able to open because, you know, I, I believe that farmer's markets are essential. Um, and, you know, to get that local produce to you know, your local communities, that's huge. And um, with all the opening, you know, with us opening, we saw a really good turnout from the community. Um, you know, we had rules set into place, you know, wear a mask, um, wash your hands often, um, sanitize often, and everyone followed those rules because they knew that coming down to the market to get that fresh produce was, you know, essential. And, and we saw a really good turnout from the community, um, a lot of support there. The vendors um, this year are reporting that their sales were up. From last year so that's really good um, we're really excited to hear that um, and even though we didn't have most of our vendors return this year because it was an option for them to do so um, if they felt safe um, we let them um, decide that for themselves um, you know we kept them um, on our website as you can see down there um, farmersmarketsucity.com we kept everybody from last year on our website because we knew that you know supporting those local businesses was huge um, and helping them get the word out was um, was primarily, you know, what we do as a, as a farmer's market. You know, we are small businesses um, and we are just really excited to serve the, the community. Perfect. Thank you, Becky. Mm -hmm. All right. And we will turn it over to Mallory. Great. Thanks, Josh. Um, so I, I know some of you might already know everything there is to know about events, but if you don't, hopefully this will give you a few tips and tricks. Um, as you probably know, events are a Facebook thing and they are incredibly valuable and we'll talk about a few of the reasons why and we'll go over a little bit how to do it and what some tips are that you might not know about about how to add them to your pages. And we always like to have fun titles. So if you have experience with Facebook personally, you probably know what this means. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about that. So Facebook events, why, why use them? What's the point? Why are they so valuable? I like to call them 
uh, really Facebook algorithm gold. Um, they're a great way to get interaction from your customers and from people that aren't already following you. So the primary advantage is that it's a free tool, just like Facebook. You don't have to pay any money to make events work for you. It's a great promotional tool for your market or for your business. And events just create some great engagement with your followers and their friends. So that's what I was getting at with that title a little bit. Uh, you might notice that sometimes as you're personally going through your Facebook feed, you see something like Mallory's going to the farmer's market on Saturday and that probably tweaks your interest. And so then you might look at that event and you might consider going. And so it's a great engagement tool. It can also just help you organize information about specific events that doesn't necessarily have to be on your business page. So if there's really something that only people that are going to that event need to know, it, events have their own little feed of information. So it's a great way to keep relevant information in the right locations for people and not overwhelm them with information. And also it's just a great way to directly reach people that are truly interested in your event, whether it's a farmer's market or a special event happening at your farm, you can actually contact those that have showed interest in that event directly through Facebook Messenger or by posting in that event. And of course, if you're personally on Facebook, you can invite your friends to your event. It's really easy to do, and uh, we can talk a little bit about how to do that, but that is one of the best ways to create interest and engagement in your farmer's market or your business. So this is a question that I get a lot, and it can be a little confusing because there are many, many things you can do with events on Facebook. We'll talk about some of these different options and what might work best for you. So the first and most simple option is that you can create an event with your page. So if you already have a farmer's market page or a page for your business, you can go in that management of that page and create an event. And that would then be hosted and managed by your business page specifically. This is really ideal for things like farmer's market dates or events that are very specific to your market or to your business. Another option is for you to co-host an event or invite a co-host to your event. So this is still um, being hosted by you and another partner, and it's a great opportunity, especially if you, for example, were to have a musician at your market, it would be ideal for you to create an event for that uh, concert as your page and then invite that musician to be a co-host with you. That way you're not duplicating. Uh, a note that I want to make here is only accept a co-host invite as your page if you're directly sponsoring or involved in the event. A great example of this is our Northeast Iowa RCND page was invited recently uh, by the Postville School District to co-host their football game, which is great and a great idea. It just wasn't really very logical for us to be a co-host because that means that we're directly involved in helping make that event happen. And so a better option would actually be this next column and would be to add that event to your page. And this is something I hope is new information maybe for some of you. It's something I stumbled upon actually and didn't know you could do this. But you can actually go into events from other pages or other businesses and you can add them to your page without co-hosting them. Really, really handy. It's something that a lot of tourism directors for counties do so that they don't have to co-host all the events happening, but they still want to share them. And um, it'll still show on your page as an event happening, but it won't show you as a direct host of that event. And I'll show you how to do that in a little bit. And then another option to support other events or, or your own is to just share them as posts on your page or even as your personal profile. Um, it's, it's a great way to get interest and you should definitely do this for the events that you've created as well. And I can talk about how to do that in a little bit too. So these are kind of four options of ways to use events on Facebook as an organization or a business. All right, so how do you do it? And I, I do apologize if this is repetitive for some of you that have experience already with this. I really wanted to create a quick walkthrough about how to do it 
And this is done using the desktop version of Facebook. It'll be a little bit different on your mobile phone, but the steps are the same. So the first step is just to go to your page management, however you get there. And there is a tab for events that you'll want to click and that will get you going in the right direction. The next step then would be to click the create an event button. Before you do that, you can see some of the events that you have either hosted or have added to your page previously. This is great. And a note too is that if you have a previous event like a farmer's market from the year before, you can also go into that event and duplicate it for the next year. So if you don't wanna do all the work again, you can just copy it, copy and paste. But if you don't have that, this is the way to start a new event. Once you do that, Facebook now has the option to create an online or an in-person event. This is newer and obviously came out of some of the current pandemic situation that we're in, but it is helpful. Um, so right now you, you may have seen on Facebook that we had an event for this particular training that was set up as an online event. And that gives you lots of different options for either registration or links for people to find that event. Um, but right now I'm gonna walk you through what an in-person event looks like because I think that might be most relevant, hopefully, to 2021. So once you click in person, you'll get to a page that looks like this. On this right side, it'll give you a preview of what that looks like as you fill in the information. That's a great way to make sure that what you're typing and what you're doing is engaging and accurate for the viewers after you make it go live. So some of this is very obvious. Um, you just wanna create your event name. I would suggest that that name be very simple and clear. Um, so even if you have an event that's called something long and complicated, Facebook is not the place to call it that. So keep it very simple, um, whether it's just decor a farmer's market or um, a concert, just make it very simple for people because they will scroll right by it if it's complicated and long. Another note, is to choose your privacy. I think in most of the cases of the events that you'll be creating, you'll always want to choose public. Private oftentimes is used if you're hosting a, you know, a Christmas party at your home and you're only inviting friends or things like that. Um, something to note is that once you create a private event, you cannot make it public after it's created. So keep that in mind. Um, the reason for that is because if somebody is posting or showing that they're interested in a private event, then they know that that is private. And so Facebook won't allow you to make something public because that person that posted in it may not want that information made public. So that is why. So most of the time, public is the way to go. And then on the same page, I just did it on a different slide because there's a lot. Um, you'll wanna do your description and that's just very basic information about the event. Um, don't worry about putting the location here or the hours. There's a different section for that. Just tell people what it's about. And then you'll have to choose a category and you'll see this pop out here that I showed, shows you an example of some of the options. Um, food is an option, which probably is relevant to most of what you're doing. And there is an other option. I would not choose that unless you have to because what you choose kind of helps with Facebook's algorithm of how they show these events to people looking through their feeds. So keep that in mind. All right, then again on that same page, this is where you're going to select your date and your time for your event. And if it's a one-time deal, then you just select the date, the start time and end time, and you're done. Um, if it's a farmer's market and it's something that happens, you know, every Wednesday and Saturday from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m., then you can create a recurring event on Facebook, which is so, so helpful now for, especially for farmer's markets, because nobody wants to create 20 events throughout the season. So this is a great way to do that. This just shows you a little bit about what that looks like. And it's really easy. It's got this calendar feature now that you can just click when those dates are. You can click the recurring information, and uh, I would definitely suggest that if you're creating events for your market. All right, and then a 
physical location for your event. So obviously if you're adding a farmer's market event, then you, you need to put the address for your farmer's market. I hope that all of you have a 911 address available for your market. If you don't, try and find the location that is just the closest as you can to where that is happening. This is important because oftentimes a majority of people are using Facebook on their phones and then they're actually going to that event and using that location to navigate in their maps to get to you. So this is really important that is accurate as possible. If you have a Google location for your farmer's market, even better because it will let you add that in there. It actually pulls from some of the locations on Google Maps. So that's awesome too. And if you have questions about that, let me know, I can help you out. So after you do all of those, you know, really simple, just information steps, you're gonna get to these, these little more fun parts. You wanna add a cover photo. Whether or not you have something that you think is good or not, you, you have to add something here or nobody will ever, ever click on your event. It just won't look fun. So even if it's just a picture of food, that's okay. If you, um, if you attend one of our previous trainings about using Canva, you could use Canva to create you know, a, a custom cover photo. I actually think that it allows you to create a, the perfect size for that if you want. And um, if you can make it custom, even better, but at least put some kind of colorful eye-catching picture here, because that's really what's gonna draw people in. And then if you have admission information like tickets, you would add that here. Probably only applicable if you're having a concert or something like that. But um, if you have it, do, do put it here because people like to find things in the easiest way possible. So it's best to add the link there versus having a link in your about section or the description section of the event. And then once you're done with all of that, you click the create event button. And once you click this, the event is live and searchable on Facebook. Most people aren't going to find it until you share about it or invite people to it. So if you're trying to create something a little ahead of time, don't panic. Most people aren't gonna find it until you start posting about it or start inviting people. But just keep that in mind once you click this, it's, it's out there. So that really gets you through the steps on how to create these events. So I hope that's a helpful just step-by-step. Step. And like Josh said, this will be recorded if you wanna come back to it and we'll make sure that the presentation is available if you're just looking for steps. It's a really great thing to share if you're a market manager with your vendors too. So a few notes that I wanted to make for you um, was how to add a co-host. I know some of you I'm sure know how to do that, but if you don't, I just wanted to show you quick how to do it. So once you're in your event, before you clicked that event, create event button, there's a little uh, cog that has event settings that's right there under admission, and it will allow you there to add a co-host to your event. So this is a great thing to do if you, you know, if you want to add vendors as co-hosts, you could do that. Um, as far as I understand, it's unlimited. And then you could also add, like I mentioned, if you have a concert going on, you could add the musicians page to that. And then once you click that um, co-host section there, it will kind of show you options as you type them in of pages that you can click or individuals. And then once you do that, that individual or page will get a notification on their account to accept that. Um, and you'll wanna let them know that you're doing that so they can watch for it because that notification can get really buried really fast. And that is the only way for them to accept it is to find it in their notifications. Which if you can see up in the little right hand corner is that little bell if you don't know and that's where they'll find that. So just a note there. And then I just wanted to show you a little bit more about how to add an event to your page. This is just such a great feature that I feel like could be used so much more than it is. So again, I wanna reiterate that it's really best if you have an event going on and you're partnering with another organization or a musician or a vendor that you both don't create separate events for the same thing happening on Facebook. That has happened a lot in different circumstances that I've seen and it creates confusion and the information isn't consistent and you'll just, you'll just get more questions, honestly, than you will participants. So 
this is a great way around that and I just wanted to show you how to do it because it's a little bit hidden. So as you're looking around for events to add to your page, you might go to a page and look, for example, here, Decora Farmers Market, and you can see that I went to their events tab and I found their Wednesday Market, which is a recurring event that happens, oh, let's see, through May and October, right, Josh? Is that right? Yeah, so I just clicked on that event and then you'll see to the right, their event page came up. And what you do then, if you wanna add that, is you find those three little dots to the right of interested in going, and it will give you the option then to add to page. And this is where you will then see a drop down, which we'll see on the next page here. Sorry, it's a little blurry, but you'll see a drop down for the pages that you administer specifically that you can then choose from those. And in this case, I chose Northeast Iowa RCND. And then you can add that to your page. Once you do that, it will show up under your page's events. As you can see to the right, this is what it looks like. It still shows that it's hosted by the Decorah Farmers Market. It doesn't show that I'm hosting it as RCND, but it shows up under the events happening that are related to our organization. So that's, that's really it in a nutshell. It's really pretty simple. It's a little bit awkward to do this on a mobile device, in, in my opinion. So if you have access to a desktop, it's, it's just easier and, and more user friendly. So really to, to close out my portion of this, just wanted to touch on some major takeaways here for you. So use events to promote your market and other related events going on. Make sure you encourage your partners to co-host or add the event, especially your county tourism organizations or your economic development professionals, ask them to add that to their page and, and show them this presentation if they, if they don't know how. Also, again, don't create multiple events for the same thing. Make sure there's one overarching event for that and make sure you use recurring events when it makes sense. And a big thing that I really didn't mention much but is important is that you yourself personally should make sure that you mark your going to the event. And that get, gets back to our fun title, Mallory's Interested in the Farmer's Market. Um, that will show your friends that you're interested in and also shows that you have personal investment in what you're working on. And then invite your friends and share, share, share. Make sure you share it as posts. If you do that, ideally, if you're sharing your own event on your page, make sure that you Click the little checkbox that gives you the option to include original post. Because if you don't, sometimes it looks a little odd on the feed for people. So if you can do that, make sure you do. Otherwise, that's just a, that's a lot of information in, in one uh, short amount of time. But I would love to hear if there's any questions from you, if you want to put them in the chat, or even if you want to unmute yourself and talk, that'd be great. All right, well, thank you, Mallory. Again, yeah, let us know if you have any questions. Please type them in or let us know, perfect. And again, while I go through this here, if you have questions, let us know. Otherwise, we had one final follow-up here. I'll be launching a poll here about the training. Again, if you have any other questions about this training or some of the other trainings, that were released this fall and winter. Here is the contact information for ourselves from Northeast Iowa RCND. And then our project partners for this program are Iowa Valley RCND, and that would be Jake and Julia down there. Again, if you have any questions for either of any of us, please let us know. We uh, again will have a special thanks to the USDA AMS program for their farmers market promotion program, which is the, the funder for this and for this component of the program and for the other component of the program, which is our boost program. We had just closed the application period for the accelerated boost part of the program, which would be a condensed three month version. This one is the, the regular typical version, which will take place this spring summer of 2021. Those applications will be coming out in early spring. So be on the lookout for those. And if you're interested in signing up for that, please let us know now or or later we'll send out emails in through social media for those and if we have no questions i suppose oh, 
We have one come through here. Oh, okay. So the question is, um, what would you recommend for advertising an event like our farmer's market versus advertising specifically for your Facebook page? Okay. Um, you let me know, Daniel, if I'm not answering this the right way, but it would be my recommendation to, um, you know, if you don't already, to first create a Facebook page for your market or for your business. And then I would recommend creating an event with that Facebook page for your farmer's market and then use that page to then promote and share about your farmer's market, which is kind of a complicated answer maybe, but I hope that answers your question and you let me know if it doesn't. Yeah, sorry, I'm talking about paid advertising. Um, so I'm curious, so we have a farmer's market page and we have an event for our farmer's market. Wondering what you recommend trying to push people to the event, but then they don't necessarily like our page or right. try to push people to our page. So then they hopefully see the event and come. Great question. Um, so my, my answer, my first answer is always, you know, um, make sure that you're doing everything you can before you pay to sponsor a post. Um, the really, honestly, the best way to get engagement for an event is for you to get as many personal accounts as possible to show that they're going or interested and have them share that personally because Facebook really prioritizes personal accounts over pages. It's just the way that it's designed and that's part of the reason it's free because they genuinely want your information. And so do that first, but it's a really great tool if you, if you wanna try some paid advertising. I would recommend paying for a sponsored post that links to your event. You can either do that by sharing the event directly as a post, or you can actually tag the event in a post if you want. So just like you would tag another page or a partner with the at sign, you can actually tag your event um, and have it be a linked uh, text in your post. So I would recommend if you want to pay for something, do it, do it as a post and, and just try a dollar. You know, that's a great way to get to people that don't already like your page. And you can also direct that to specific people in a geographic location if you want. And it's worth a try if you just have a couple of dollars. It's a great way to try it. Micro targeting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, Oh, sci-fi conventions. That sounds fun, Lisa. Um, so there are definitely ways when you, when you pay for a sponsored post to kind of do different kinds of targeting. Um, I'm, again, I'm a big proponent of not paying if you don't have to. Um, you can, as I mentioned earlier, once you have people that have showed that they're either interested or going in your event, you can actually send them a group message in Facebook Messenger to give them an update if you want. Um, that is a great way to reach those people directly. You can also post within that event to reach them directly and they will get notifications about that unless they've opted out of that, which is possible. Some people like to keep things very private and so you can only reach the ones that have allowed their self, themselves to be reached, if that makes sense. Great questions. Great. Thank you all for the questions. And again, there is our, we try to keep the short and sweet and our half hour is here. So I wanna, again, thank you, Mallory. Thank you, Becky. Thank you all for joining us today. And again, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to reach out. And also if you knew someone that missed it or wants to see this later, these all will be hosted online for people to view later. Thanks, right. Josh. Yep, thanks everybody.